There have been some awesome shiners and some lousy stinkers, but then there were those that were just let down. Name's Dave with Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 disappointing games of 2019 so far. Now listen carefully, for this list we're taking a look at the games that held promise only to come crashing down in mediocre flames. That doesn't mean they're completely abysmal, no 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 no, but their shortcomings bring everything to a grinding halt. If you'd like to see the best and worst so far, be sure to check out those videos after this. Now isn't the time for this. Okay. Got it. Number 10. Kill la kill the game if. Based off one of the best anime series of the decade, Kill La Kill The Game If, I hate that title, looked like a promising title from the franchise's first foray into gaming. After all, this was a 3D fighting game being published by Arc System Works, the same minds behind the Guilty Gear and Blas Blue franchises. And the project was being supervised by Studio Trigger. So how could this not fail? <laughs> Well, for starters, the oversimplified combat made fights bland after a while. And on top of that, the story mode was only a couple of hours long, and the character roster was extremely lean. How could you pay $60 for a game and you didn't get that much to offer? <laughs> Number 9, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order. <laughs> a brand new Marvel Ultimate Alliance game? Developed by Ninja Theory? Published by Nintendo? Holy crap, this is the most ambitious crossover in entertainment history, right? Oh, not quite so. The Black Order had potential to be a triumphant return to the once beloved Ultimate Alliance series, but it quickly proved some things are best left in the past. Despite boasting a robust character roster, the game soils itself with uninteresting and repetitive combat, bland visuals, and a camera frustrating enough to make anyone break a Joy-Con. The word of the day, kids, is squandered, and the Black Order perfectly demonstrates that proudly with its lack of unique alternate costumes. Number 8. Rage 2 When Rage 2 was first leaked by Walmart Canada, many wondered why we were getting a sequel to what was one of 2011's most meh games. If only the game had kept the same high octane bloodthirsty energy as its marketing campaign did. <laughs> Blasting baddies and decapitating people with wingsuits was fun, but once again, Rage 2 follows in the footsteps of its predecessor and did nothing interesting. After the carnage, you're left quietly exploring and collecting materials which kills the game's pacing. It's like when you're having fun with your friends and your mother says, time to go home and help with your chores. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty jealous right now, so keep a lid on it, will ya? Number seven, Days Gone. I didn't plan on this, goddammit. Where Days Gone gets it right, it gets really right. Somewhere within this game, there is an interesting story about a rugged biker trying to reunite with his wife in a zombie, sorry, freaker infested world. However, the game's flaws often overshadow its strongest moments. Guns can be a hassle to control, the AI is incredibly stupid, and the game was bogged down with some serious glitches and technical issues. It doesn't help that the overall design of Days Gone makes the game look like a by-the-numbers open-world game. Given how Sony has had a solid run with first-party exclusives, it's hard to believe they would end up with something this lackluster. You okay, brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a graze. Son of a bitch can't aim worth a damn. Number six. Forever strikes again, no more heroes. The tricky part of making a hack and slash game is making the combat satisfying, without letting things get stale. No More Heroes has been able to escape this problem thanks to its humor, flares, and attitude. But Travis Strikes Again instead tried to simplify the combat of its predecessors, and the results were disastrous. <laughs> Plowing through enemies felt like beating a cardboard box with a waffle bat, and the bosses don't do much to make the fights feel challenging. As for the frequent use of meta humor, well, everyone has their own tastes. 
On the plus side, at least we're getting a true No More Heroes sequel now. The Death Drive Mark II, the Phantom Game Console. Number five, Dr. Mario World. Just tap the capsule and it'll rotate. What's this? In hindsight, it's no surprise to see a mobile game make it on here. But given Nintendo's decent track record of not so shady mobile games, Dr. Mario World has plenty of reason to be here. A match three puzzle game, Dr. Mario World trades the franchise's challenging design for luck-based gimmicks and gacha mechanics. You can use them to continue a stage, obtain items, or restore stamina. So if there's a random difficulty spike in the way, you'll either have to grind for it or fork over extra cash for microtransactions. You know, it seems inevitable that Dr. Mario would have ended up on mobile devices, given its initial popularity on the Game Boy. But did we have to sacrifice so much of the original formula for a freemium model? Oh, that's too bad. Number four, Wolfenstein Youngblood. Oh, Bethesda, Bethesda, Bethesda. Never before have we seen so much good will burst into flames faster than leaky gas tank. Admittedly, Surf and Jess boast colorful personalities, even if they do get a little cringy after a while. But it isn't enough to break Youngblood's ugliness. Sure, it looks like Wolfenstein, but at its core, it's another live service game with a messy story, standard RPG elements, oh yeah, and uh, microtransactions. Youngblood is just a mediocre mark for another IP for Bethesda to cross off the list of popular franchises to adulterate. With Fallout 76, The Elder Scrolls Blades, and now Wolfenstein Youngblood being Bethesda's current trend, it honestly has us worried that Doom might be next on the road to disaster. Oh, son of a! I don't know. Depression, maybe. Number three, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. <laughs> Well, this is a shocker, isn't it? Over on Mojo Plays, our reviewer Ty gave a glowing review for Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel, praising the remaster for its expressive animations, imaginative tracks, and faithful recreation of the original's mechanics. So why is Nitro Fuel tacked on that list? <laughs> this comes down solely to the fact that microtransactions were added to the game a month and a half after launch, after the review period was over. Unlocking card parts is extremely grindy, and you only get 30 to 80 coins per track, giving offline players no room to earn Wampa coins quicker. This is wrong on so many levels! And you know, this isn't the only praising reviews we've had to retract. Have you seen Dead or Alive 6's DLC and microtransactions lately? Like, come on guys! Number 2, Crackdown 3. Could you believe we almost went an entire decade without a new Crackdown game? It's hard to imagine what really would be worse, that or the disappointing launch that was Crackdown 3. This machine pistol is all about filling the air with lead at close range. With fans hoping for a return to form after the polarizing Crackdown 2, many lofty promises were made about this title for years prior. Claims like using the Xbox One's cloud processing to generate high destructible environments, or that the game would be the ultimate Terry Crews simulator. Yeah, none of those expectations were met. Instead, it was like we were sent back to 2007 and experienced the outdated mechanics of the first Crackdown, without the time travel. So if you wanted a pure Crackdown game, you kinda got it? No! Not like this! No! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, and this should be a surprise to no one, Anthem. Oh, Bioware, what have you become? Since it's revealed at E3 2017, EA championed Anthem to be Bioware's next masterpiece. But as we know now, behind closed doors, Bioware was struggling to figure out what Anthem even was. 
starting development 18 months before it was officially released this past February. Long story short, it failed to meet expectations, as some publishers would put it. A lack of content and tedious missions are just a couple of problems that plague the game. Oh, and it crashed on several consoles and computers, including our own PC at Mojo Plays. So since then, most of the player base has already left. BioWare maintains that it's still committed to Anthem for years to come, but whether or not players will stick around to support the game, well, that's anyone's guess. Well, crap. I'll give him some time. He's got to learn for himself what he can and cannot do. I suppose so. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.